Talking about this now, Mayor de Blasio's deadline requiring the city's municipal workers to be vaccinated against COVID-19, it goes into effect today at 5 p.m. So this includes members of the FDNY and the NYPD. They'll have to prove that they've begun the vaccination process or they'll be put on unpaid leave. With violent crimes on the rise, many New Yorkers are concerned the city will face increasing levels of crime. So far, 76% of the NYPD are vaccinated. But is that enough to keep us safe? Police Commissioner Dermot Shea joining us this morning. Nice to have you back on Good Day New York. No, it's great to be here, guys. So, Commissioner, you have been pleading with the force to get the vaccine before 5 o'clock tonight. Are they listening? What proof do you have? Yeah, they, I think they are. And, you know, I think human nature, people put things off. Uh, as of this morning, 80% now, Rosanna. Um, it's going to be a busy day today. We did over 1,000 yesterday. Today's the last day that people can collect the extra $500. So I have every belief that today is going to be very busy. And uh, even though it takes effect today, it really, it really, Monday is the first day that you would be without pay. So they have the ability to get shots Saturday and Sunday as well. It's, you know, we're working around the clock here. This is what the public should know. We're going to, from the police department perspective, we're going to be okay. We, we have contingency plans. Those plans are being actually scaled down in terms of, you know, what percentage are we at? How would we address it to keep the cops on the street rolling? From my perspective, you know, we have some unanswered questions still with reasonable accommodations. Um, we, have, we do have thousands of people that have put in for them, but they, they are subject to testing and continue to work. So um, well, well, a little better position today than we were, let's say, a week ago. But the planning continues. We'll be okay. All right, but, but there are some precincts that have less than 50% vaccinated, including my old precinct in Brooklyn, the 68th. Also, I heard the 26th precinct. They also have very low vaccination rate. What are you going to do come Monday? Yeah, well, listen, Rosanna, we're, we're in good shape. I don't know where those numbers came from, and they're certainly outdated. If we, we are looking at individual precincts, really individual shifts at this point in time, uh, and we'll move resources around. But as I said, the key thing is here, we've had, we've had significant increase in people getting vaccinated in the last three days, and, and that's the good news here. So, again, for, for New Yorkers, you know, what we should be talking about right now is the seven shootings that happened in New York City yesterday and the crime that we still have to deal with. But on the vaccination front, I believe we're, we're going to be OK. Which is why you certainly need every single police officer out there protecting the city. But Commissioner Shea, I do want to ask, take us through Monday when you have an unvaccinated uh, NYPD personnel show up to the precinct. Is someone checking their you know, vaccine card or can they work? Who's turning them away and how does that process look? So what we've done, and we've done it for a while now, um, anyone that's vaccinated, we have a computer system where they upload those vaccination uh, facts into this system. So it's, it's computerized on our end. There's no doubt it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a, a busy day Monday for sure. But anyone coming into work that's not vaccinated, that doesn't have that pending um, reasonable accommodation request, that was submitted by Wednesday, uh, they would be sent home, leave without pay. But again, the contingencies are there. New Yorkers should not, should not be worried about this because on the PD side, we have people working throughout the weekend. We have myself, uh, the executive team having, whether it's calls or sitting around this very table that I'm at each day this week, and contingency plans are in place there. So this will not affect cops on the street can you can you expand a bit more on those contingency plans because you mentioned those seven shootings yeah. as, as something that we should be worried about so who would be stepping in if come monday you are missing you know a couple hundred to a thousand nypd sure. members sure well it depends where they come from first and foremost so it, it could be some of the people are not normally assigned to patrol but the to, to to make it as simple as possible the first step would be reassignment of personnel that ordinarily are not doing patrol functions can be pulled into those. There's not going to be administrative functions to the scale that we normally see. We're suspending training temporarily and that frees up additional bodies. So there's things like that taking place. That's before overtime is used. That's before, you know, tours are extended, which I really feel like I, I want to avoid that. It's real tough 
on the family life for these officers yeah. and, and civilians, and, and I don't see that right now. I think the cops would be happy to hear this as a possibility, like going to 12-hour shifts. Anything is always possible, but I, again, as I, where I, we stand now and knowing that it's going to continue to grow, I, I think we're in pretty good shape. So I, I'm just wondering if you ever sat down with the mayor and said, hey, listen, the testing program is working every week. Why do we have to mandate my personnel right now? Yeah, I, I've talked to the mayor on this issue a number of times. I support the vaccines, I do. Um, when, when you think back about a year ago, and I get all sides of this, I truly do. But when you think a year ago, the biggest thing that we were worried about was getting vaccines and are we gonna get them quick enough? And now you fast forward a year and we have them and, and we're not taking them. I, I, I think it's, it's a little craziness. Uh, I get all sides of this, but for public health, there's many industries. Um, colleges have had to be vaccinated last year. Health fields. Um, I've been getting vaccines since I was a little kid, as I'm sure both of you have. Our kids go to school and get vaccines. Um, I've been supportive of this. Some people may not like this, but I think it's in the best interest of society. All right. So you know that there may be a morale issue with the police department. They feel... Um, you know, with the defund the police and all the changes going on, they may not feel at their best right now. And there is a two-day retirement fair coming up. Are you concerned that there's going to be an exodus? Well, so I, I saw that story. What's behind that? The truth on that is that there was, there has not been in-person retirements um, since COVID hit for COVID reasons. So we, there's no doubt we've had an increase in uh, retirements going back to June of 2020. It has been higher than we would all like, and that's not just here in New York City. So when we came to this point in time right now, knowing that we've had no in-person retirements, knowing that we have been trending up, and now with a bit of an unknown with the uh, vaccine mandate, we worked with the pension fund and they asked and we complied and we said, hey, We'll give you the auditorium just to make sure if we have that increase, we'll have it as seamless as possible. Um, too early to say what the numbers are. I mean, I know a few people that retired this month personally, and they didn't retire because of the shot. I've heard some people um, that, that did leave because of the shot. I don't anticipate, you know, really significant increases because of the vaccine, but it is possible, and we'll see when the numbers bear out. Right. At the end of the month, every month, is when we generally see an increase, vaccine or not. Yeah. The shooting's obviously a problem. Everybody's concerned, especially with not having enough police personnel come Monday. I mean, yesterday you were dealing with a shooting in broad daylight on Broadway and West 71st Street. 3.30 yep. in the afternoon, an innocent bystander from out of town right next to elementary school i know right next to, i mean yep. what is going on well listen a, a 71 year old man from florida that comes to new york city crossing the street shot we've had this conversation before uh, you know to everyone that was defunding that was abolishing last year the silence right now is deafening and, and, and whether it's a legislator that refuses to fix broken laws or, or those that were tweeting abolish the police, uh, you own this. And they need to step up and make the fixes that New Yorkers deserve. Any, wow. Do, is Albany listening to you? Any, any kind of... I, I think we've seen small progress you know you saw members of the city council recently signing a letter and sending it to albany i mean this they're hearing it on the street every day and that's what that's what it takes i think there's you know new yorkers continue i mean i did a citizens police academy graduation last night here every, literally every night you, you, i'm hearing from new yorkers across the city that are saying the same thing we want more police Right. We need more enforcement. We need people carrying guns to be held accountable. I'm hearing it from parents, parents of kids. We, we recently had a, a child, 16 years old, who's been arrested four times in 10 months for a gun. If that doesn't ring and resonate with our legislators, I don't know what will. 
we need action. We need it now. And let's fix this as quickly as possible. And, and Bianca, you asked about the morale. You're right. It's been a tough time in law enforcement. But later this morning, I'm going to be at a medal day ceremony for officers that have done amazing acts of heroism or been injured in the law line of duty. Several that have given their life in the line of duty. So the one thing New Yorkers should know, we started with it and I would finish with this, is that when the bell rings, we will be there for New Yorkers. And we will be there today, we will be there tomorrow, we will be there Monday, vaccine or not. So New Yorkers should know that. Police Commissioner Shea, thank you so much. We thank the, your police force as well for keeping us safe in New York City. Uh, and Thank we'll, you, guys. And we'll be keeping an eye on things. Yeah, a lot of Happy Halloween. All right. Thanks so much. We'll be right